What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingView.com and in this video, we're going to look at the pooling layer for convolutional neural networks with PyTorch and Python. All right, guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at the pooling layer. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingView.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at the pooling layer for our convolutional neural network. So we started out, we've got our image, we talked about convolution. In this video, we're gonna look at pooling. And you can see from this video, you can have convolution, then you can have another pooling layer, then you can have another convolution layer, then you can have another pooling layer. So you could stack these all kinds of different ways. And we'll talk about why you might wanna do different methods of this later on. In this video, I just wanna kind of talk about what is the pooling layer? What's going on here? What's the high level overview of what's going on? And coming up in the next video, we're gonna actually start coding out our CNN, our convolutional neural network. This is probably the last video where we just talk about broad topics and then we'll dive right in and get started. The pooling layer is sort of what it sounds like. It takes all of the inputs from our convolutional layer and it sort of pulls them and reduces them. We talked about in the last video or a couple of videos ago, and if you didn't see that, check the link in the pinned comment section below, that we could do all this with a regular neural network, but there would be just tons and tons and tons of inputs, tons of parameters, and it would just take too long to do. Well, even when we're using a convolution network and sort of scrunching those parameters down, there's still a lot of parameters, and we wanna reduce that even more by using a pooling layer. So if we head over to Google, I just Google convolutional neural network pooling. So here's our basic image we start out with. We take our filter or our kernel and we drag it across and then we get our convolutional layer. So that's this guy right here. Pooling then reduces it down even more. And that process is called downsampling. Some people call it subsampling, same thing. But basically what we're doing is you can see reducing it down even more. So these are all the inputs in our convolution layer or the parameters in our convolution layer. And then we reduce it down to just this in the pooling layer. And there's several different methods to downsample or subsample. A couple of the popular ones are max pooling and average pooling. What we're doing is the same thing we did in the original image. We're dragging a filter across and we're setting a window here. It's two by two. You can see they've colorized it in this image. And we have our stride length. We're moving it across. In this case, they're striding across two. And so for instance, max pooling, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take these four inputs, these four parameters, and it's just gonna take the max one, the biggest one. And you can see that's a four. So then that one gets slapped into our pooling layer as a four. All the rest of this information, these twos and three, that just disappears. In essence, you're losing information when you do that, but the trend is gonna stay pretty much the same, roughly the same, at least in percentage wise, right? And you can sort of expect that. Same thing here. So what's the max one here? It's also four, so you get a four there. Then it drops down here, three, two, two, which the, what's the max one there? Well, that's three. And then over here, four, five, three, that becomes a five. And so then we have a pooling layer here. Now, like I said, we can always then from our pooling layer, start all over again with a whole other convolution layer, right? And then another pooling layer, and then another convolution layer, whatever you wanna do, you can have convolution, convolution, convolution pooling. You can have convolution pooling, convolution pooling. There's all kinds of different methods and we'll get into all that later on as to which ones are better and why. Mostly you're just gonna tinker around yourself and see what kind of works good for the image and the thing that you're working with. But anyway, that's max pooling. The other one is average pooling. So in average pooling, you would just sum these up. So four plus two is six, plus two is eight, plus three is 11, divide by four, you're gonna get three point something and that's gonna go in here. Same thing here, two plus three is five, plus four is nine, 10, 11, same thing here. See, this one's gonna be four, eight, eight, 16. 16 divided by four, because there's four of them, the average for that one would be four. So this blue one would be four. So same concept, you're dragging your, your window across, you're stepping across. With max pooling, you're just taking the max value. With average pooling, you're taking the average value. And there are several different things. You know, earlier we're summing up when we did our convolution layer. There's a sum pooling you could do, right? It just sort of depends. We're gonna probably start with max pooling and average pooling. Those are sort of the common ones you're gonna see. And that's all there is to it. Now, like I said, this is gonna remove a lot of information, but hopefully the trend here is gonna be about the same, right? The averages, the percentages, they're gonna be sort of the same. One more time, looking at this very quickly, one last overview here. We've got our original image. We have our convolution layer we talked about in the last couple of videos. And we have our pooling layer. We may have another convolution layer. We may have another pooling layer. We may not, we may just have two. 
And then at the end, you'll flatten this out and then go to a fully connected layer. Uh, we'll talk about that briefly, but we've already discussed fully connected layers a little bit in the last video. And definitely when we talked about artificial neural networks many videos ago, uh, but then you get your output and you go from there. So that's pretty much the high level overview stuff I wanted to talk about. I know it's taken a little while to explain all this stuff, but it's important to have a high level overview of what's going on with these neural networks before you just start coding them up and you don't really know why you're doing the coding that you're doing. Hopefully now you have an understanding of what's going on behind the scenes, at least in a broad overview sort of way. So in the next video, we'll start coding out our convolutional neural network. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So it's access to all my courses, almost 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.